Hello, welcome back. Hopefully I didn't lose you on the string manipulation video. I know it was a little long and there was a lot to learn in there, but it's also very, very important stuff to know. In this video, we are going to learn how to accept user input in the form of a prompt. And so when we open a page, it can ask for your name or an age or something like that. And then you can actually work with that. And then you can like turn it into uppercase or lowercase or anything like that. So I just have an HTML file here and I'm gonna create a new script and uh, let's move this sort of in the center of the screen here. And let's create a new script. And we are going to use a brand new function. It looks a lot like alert, but it's not alert, it's called prompt. And this is just going to prompt someone for some input. So we could say prompt and what is your name? And when I refresh this, says, what is your name? I'll type in Caleb, nothing happens. And that's because all it did was ask for my name. I didn't store it in a variable. I didn't force the HTML to change. We didn't update the document object model. We didn't do anything. We just said, what is your name? And that's it. So while that's a cool function, currently it's not useful. So let's go ahead and make it useful. So let's say var name is equal to prompt, what is your name? And then, Let's go ahead and console log that. Console.log your name is and name. Refresh. I'll put Caleb once more. Aha! Your name is Caleb. Just like that. And so that's how you ask someone for really any sort of data. Now, the big thing to take note of here is that whenever you use prompt, the input always comes back as a string. So if you're trying to add numbers together, so if you have two prompts like uh, enter number one and then enter number two and then maybe enter number three. You might not get the results you're looking for. And as an example, let's go ahead and type name and we can see that it has quotations around it. So we know it's a string, but we can always also type type of name. And that tells me it's a string. So let's go ahead and get rid of this. And let's inject this. Let's change these underscores here from custom input to whatever the value was that someone put in there. So when I say, what is your name? And I type in Caleb, these underscores should change to Caleb. So first things first, we need to grab this node, this H3. So let's go ahead and create a new variable. Now it's called H3 node, I guess. Uh, document dot get element by ID. And we're just going to use custom input. Again, that just matches up here. And then we could say h3.node.inner text is equal to whatever the name is. Let's go ahead and refresh and say, what is your name? Well, my name is going to be Caleb. Aha, look at that. Your name was or is Caleb. Let's change that to is because I am not past tense. I am present tense. Now, what if we wanted to do some sort of string manipulation on this? What if? I wanted to make sure all the input, all of it is always lowercase. Well, we could do two things. If we know that it's always, 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 always going to be lowercase, we could change it right away. We could say name is equal to name dot to lowercase. And whenever we reference name down the road, such as in here, it will always be lowercase. So let's give this an example. Caleb in all caps, and I hit OK, and it shows up in lowercase. That's what we're expecting. Now, if you don't want this to always be lowercase and you want to preserve whatever the user inputs and you just want it to be lowercase just once, you could do dot to lowercase here. And then we could also do like a console log and we can log the original name. And so what we're doing is saying, hey, what is your name? Store that in a variable. Then we grab the H3 node, that's this custom input. And we say, hey, let's grab that inner text and change it. Let's change it to whatever the user is inputted, but let's actually make sure that it's always lowercase. And then let's console log the name. Now at this point in time, do you think the name is all going to be lowercase? When we do a console log, will the name be entirely lowercase because we set it to lowercase here? Or do you think it's going to be not lowercase because we only changed it this one time? Now that's actually a good question because different programming languages operate differently in this respect. So let's, let's experiment with this. Let's go ahead and put Caleb in, in all caps. 
and we can see all lowercase, but when we console log, it's all in caps. So this did not actually change it at all. So what we did here, name .to lowercase, it didn't actually change the name value. It just changed it this one time. It just changed the value this one time, but it didn't actually change the entire name forever. And so this is where we get into a lot more variable manipulation, string manipulation, things like that, because now we can preserve the user input, that's the name, and we can say, actually, you know, just in this one case, make it lowercase. But in, in every other case, keep it the same, because we might want to do something with it. So this is a very simple way of accepting user input. And in the wild, in a live website, you don't see this used. You see text fields being used. You see text areas, drop downs, things like that. And we're gonna get to all of that, but we need to learn how to manage user input to begin with. And this is a really good stepping stone for that. So we've learned how to accept someone's input, save it in a variable, grab a node, and then change the value of that node to be whatever the, the prompt was, whatever the user input was. And this sort of prepares us for a thing called event listeners. Event listeners are how we can basically say, hey, anytime someone types in a text area or changes a select field, we can do something based off of that. And it's at this point that our code actually becomes quite dynamic because up until now, we haven't been able to accept custom input. We've had alerts that tell us things, but we've never actually been able to inject any sort of text or variable information onto the page. And now we can. And so I think for the next couple of videos, we're going to learn how to sort of work with this a little bit. And that's going to really prepare us for uh, the more future JavaScript when we deal with like event listeners and more user input and how to manage all of that. And just as a refresher, let's go ahead and let's say name and let's do alert name. What is your name? My name is Caleb. And then when I click OK, it's just going to alert. My name is Caleb. My name is Caleb. Just like that. And that's all there is to prompt and alert. And now you're a prompt and alert pro, to be totally honest. Okay, so I just undid that. Now, what happens if you want some default text in here? Let's say you're tinkering around and you know you're experimenting, you're learning, you're playing with JavaScript as you should be. But every time you refresh the page, you have to type in the name. Well, eventually you're just gonna start typing in stuff like this. That's not super useful. Let's give it a default. Let's go ahead. And the second parameter of prompt is going to be I'm just gonna put my name. What is your name, Caleb? And when I refresh, it's automatically filled in for me. And another thing to note in here is when we refresh, let's get rid of this and let's click okay. And let's go in here and say, what is name? Name is an empty string, there's nothing in there. Now what happens if I hit cancel instead of leaving it empty? Well, it says my name is null. So let's go ahead and see what name is. Name is a string called null, or so it seems. Let's double check. Let's use type of name, and it is a string. And so basically, there's nothing in here. In the next video, we are going to learn about these things called comparison operators to make sure that our input is actually what we're expecting. And if it's not, well, do something else. And this is how we give computers commands based on user input. So let's jump over to that next video where we learn about comparison operators. And this is really where Everything we've learned so far turns into real programming.